Hey there, welcome back to Garage Time. Today I'm going to work on installing this brake reservoir for the brake fluid. Check it out. Garage Time. As I said last week, I am working on a giant to-do list of things to make this car drivable. This is one of those items, and if you haven't noticed, I've been releasing daily videos on the list and each of the items on the list. So if you haven't seen that or if you didn't get notified because you didn't click the little bell, then I'm gonna leave the links of all those videos in the description below if you wanna check them out. Sometimes I cross two things off, sometimes just one, but I'm working the list down. Yeah, here's this crazy pedal assembly. And one of the things I've done this week is I bled the master cylinders. So these have been bled internally. Now I had to take the hoses off to get it into the master cylinder, but internally there's fluid in there and that's why it says no pushing because I don't wanna shoot fluid out until I get the reservoirs installed. Then the fluid can go in with gravity and hopefully not get too much air in the system. It's gonna to have to be bled for sure. So. Let's get the reservoir in and all the hard lines in to get it connected. Yeah, I see no reason why I shouldn't just use the stock reservoir. It comes with the factory bracket, which I've already repainted. There's holes in the car that screws right to it. And then the brake lines or the reservoir lines can go right down into the interior of the car using some existing holes. So this I think is gonna work okay. Let's go to the car and check it out. Okay, this reservoir goes right here. Oh no. So I got this all backwards. This is like this, and then this must go like this. Yeah, there we go. So this is gonna screw in like this, and wow, it looks kind of dirty compared to the new paint. But I'll worry about that later. Then there's these two holes right here that go directly into the footwell, which is perfect. That's where my master cylinders are. And I'm gonna make some hard lines coming up through the car with some grommets. And then just like the factory, you just use some rubber lines right here. And I also realized um, I'm missing one of the uh, clip nuts that, that allow me to screw a screw in there. Use a sheet metal screw on these clip nuts. So I need to find one of those and we can get this part at least mounted. Yeah, I have bags and bags of extra screws and stuff. And apparently these little clips come in different sizes. This one's too small. This one is uh, too big. So I'm just looking for something in the middle and I got to dig through a bunch of stuff. It wasn't super organized when I pulled this car apart, mostly because it was already apart. I got it. I think I got the right one. Okay, that part's done. Let's bend some more tube. This is quarter inch tubing. I think it has enough enough internal diameter to uh, feed the master cylinders. I know this first bend needs to be pretty close to the master cylinder.
It'll be a miracle if this is right the first time. Nope, this bend right here is, is too long. So I'm going to kind of unbend it, rebend it. This, is, this piece is gonna get scrapped. The thing with this welding wire is it's pretty flexible, so it, it really covers up a lot of problems. And these, this length right here is a little too long. This is really just one continuous bend. I'm going to put the AN flare on the end of this and then move this bend a little bit closer. I need a certain distance in order for this flare tool to work. I'm trying to keep this thing sloped inside the car. Even though it doesn't look as nice, it's better if it's sloped so the air bubbles can come out. Yeah, this one's the real deal. I'm going to remake this one without any mistakes in it, hopefully. The other nice thing about AN fittings is you can, you can maneuver them around the tubing. So you can actually get bends closer to the flare than you can with the traditional double din. I really like the AN better. Okay, it's a little hard to see in here guys because it's just so black but you can see that blue piece that's right where the line attaches to the master cylinder and it quickly takes a turn and goes up along the back against the the wall there and it's sloping up it'll slope up a little bit more once it's attached to the reservoir on the trunk side but it goes through a hole just behind the wire harness okay, and then inside here you can see this is taped but this will get pulled up like so with a grommet and then it'll just get a, a flex line to go between these two. So I can probably bend this just a little bit more to help line it up, but that'll be a real short rubber hose. On this one, I'm gonna use the same template because I want them to sort of follow each other in tandem, but I'm just gonna shorten this bend by the distance between the master cylinders, which is about two and five eighths, two and a half. So I'm gonna hope for the best and get it as close as I can. And now there's two lines. Once again, really hard to see, but they go up together, follow tandem, and then go right up into the trunk area. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to use the stock tow boards anyways, and I don't really feel a need for tow boards here. Everything should clear, as far as I can tell. Definitely the brake pedal is not ever gonna hit those reservoir lines. And then up here, you can see how they both come out and just angle up a little bit. Once I get the hoses on, it's gonna anchor it into uh, a nice shape. The reservoir sort of looks like Bahama yellow. Maybe that's on purpose. And these are the stock hoses. I got both of them. I just took the hose clamp off and I'm going behind it to see what the line is like underneath here. I think it's just a straight line. So this is what the factory reservoir line looks like. This is what my line looks like. They're, they're pretty similar. It's a little bit larger diameter on that. So I wanna show you guys another trick I'm gonna do with the end of the line. Okay, I put a little, a little barb on the end of this. So when you put this on, it really fits pretty tight. So I'll put a hose clamp behind that and shouldn't have any leaks. Just measuring for the length of the hose here. 11 centimeters on that one. I got a uh, hot, hot cup of water and I'm just soaking the end of the hose in here for a few minutes to soften it up a little bit so that I can push it on here without cracking or breaking the reservoir. Last thing I want to do is crack this and have it leak all over the uh, yellow paint. So I want to be really careful with this and then this will get the hose clamp on that side. The factory didn't have a hose clamp on this one because it's barbed. Yeah, that was really easy. I'm also sliding some grommets on here too. The 
There you go. You can see the little grommets down there, black. Okay, that's install reservoir off the list and install pedal box off the list. Got a lot done this week on the brakes. Started with 39 and we're now down into the 20s. 28 left to go. If you saw all the videos this week, give yourself a pat on the back and thank you very much for watching. If you haven't, I will link in the description below so you can go check them out. Honest progress on a daily basis. It's not summary, it's just me doing the work and it's one item at a time. That's how you get it done. So check them out and I will probably take the weekend off. I'll probably hit it back on Monday. See you then.